The Great Gildersleeve. A special rebroadcast for all you soldiers, sailors, and Marines of the United Nations. Listen to another amazing episode in the life of the great Gildersleeve. bedroom, Leroy the scholar, eager for knowledge, sits at his desk poring over a problem in mathematics. Clang, 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 went the trolley. Ding, 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 went the bell. On Clang's 18th night, he... Oh, is it? <laughs> Leroy, concentrate, my boy. Ah, the great Gildersleeve himself. Down in the living room, sitting on an uncomfortable little stool and holding a skein of yarn for his niece, Marjorie. Uncle Mort, hold your hands up a little. Really, you're the worst fidgeter I ever saw. I don't see why you make me sit on a stool. Because you're so big. I can't whine if you're way above me. Yes, yes. Well, it's bad for the stool, my dear. The stool wasn't built for it. I mean, you weren't built for it. <laughs> no, my dear. But keep your hands up. It'll slip off. Confound it, Marjorie. My arms are tired. It won't take a minute. Bad for you to sit in one position all the time. Bad for your blood. It uh, settles down. <laughs> In the corner. Get sluggish. Can lead to rheumatism. It'll only be a minute. Marjorie, my nose is itching. It'll stop. Uh, I can't stand it. Oh, don't. Keep your hands apart. Well, then you scratch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's better. Phone. Phone, phone. I'll take it. It's coming for me. You stay where you are. Oh, I'll get her. Hello? Yes, just a minute. For you, Uncle Mort, it's Judge Hooker. Oh, don't put the wool down. Well, how am I? Gee, I'm trapped. <laughs> just walk over here with it. I'll hold the phone up to your ear. Uh, 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 the things I go through. Hold it closer, Marjorie. Hello, Judge. Oh, sure, I'd be glad to see you. But I'm going to see you in half an hour anyway, down at the Jolly Boys Club. Oh, private? Well, certainly, come ahead, Judge. Goodbye. What do you suppose the old goat's got on his mind? Oh, look out, it's pale with a phone cord. Oh, this darn thing. No, I'll fix it. Funny. Judge said he had to see me alone. Something private. So hurry up and finish winding this wool, will you, my dear? If the judge catches me doing this, I'll never hear the end of it. Good evening, Judge. Come in. Good evening, Bertie. How they take me? Pretty good. I can't complain. If they don't treat you right here, just you let me know. I need a good cook over at my house and... Oh, good evening, Doc Morton. I didn't see you. <laughs> After your old tricks, I see, Judge. <laughs> evening, Marjorie. Hello, Judge. Preparing to do a little Hi, knitting, Judge. I see. Hello there, Leroy. Leroy, I thought I told you to go upstairs and finish your homework. I did. You've done all of it? Yep. Every bit of it? Yep. Scout's on her? Yep. I guess the boy's done his homework. Come on in the living room, Judge. Well, did you do your spelling? Didn't have any. <laughs> <laughs> boy, she's smart for you, Gilly. Yeah, I found that out long ago. Oh, to the break, kid. Uh. <laughs> Very well, Leroy. In that case, you can play and enjoy yourself for another five minutes and then Betty by. It's bedtime, my boy. How do you like that? I work and slave all evening till I get a nervous breakdown practically, and that's the reward I get. Those, Leroy, are the breaks. <laughs> you come with me, Leroy. <laughs> I'll give you something for your nervous breakdown. Any more of those brownies, Yeah. <laughs> well, Judge, what's on your mind? We're due down at the Jolly Boys Club in 20 minutes. Gildy, if you don't mind, could we go into your study? Your yes, study? Certainly, if it's as private as all that. You'll excuse us, Marjorie. <laughs> Uh, shoot, Judge. Yeah, they, we've been friends for a long time, now, haven't we? Off and on, yes. We've been through a lot together. Yes, we have. Well? What's eating you, Horace? 
doggone it if I tell you, you'll laugh. Well, not unless it's a laughing matter. Gildy, I believe I can say without fear of contradiction that this is one of the most serious matters in my life. I don't know what to do about it. It's got me all this way and that. I sit down to read a brief and my mind wanders. If you're worried about losing your mind, Judge, I wouldn't give it a thought. You've got very little to lose. <laughs> Gildy, will you be serious? Huh? I'm trying to tell you something. It has nothing to do with my mind. It's more an affair of the heart. Oh? Well, why don't you go see a doctor, Judge? Why don't... Judge? You don't mean... Uh-huh. I'm afraid that Cupid has entered my life, Gildy. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know, I'm sorry, Judge. You caught me unawares. Yeah. Wait a minute. Who's the woman? Why do you want to know? If you've been poaching on my... No, no one you know. <laughs> oh, well, who is she? Well, I prefer that you remain anonymous for the time being. Yeah, suspicious old goat. I should to say that she is uh, not unattractive. She is, in fact, very talented. To put it bluntly, Gildy, she's got me talking to myself. <laughs> Does she reciprocate your affection, Horace? That I have no way of knowing. There's a way you can darn soon find out. What's that? Ask her. Well, I couldn't do that. She doesn't even know that I... Uh, well, uh... Judge, don't tell me you've been worshipping her from afar. Well, hang it, Gildy. I don't know how to handle these things the way you do. That's why I came over here to see you. <laughs> well, you've been wasting your time, Horace. Move right in. That's the only way to work it. Now, hold on. This young lady is not like most of the ones you've had dealings with. This book... <laughs> What do you mean? Well, she's, uh, in a word, she's Spanish. Spanish, huh? Well, Spanish descent. And you know how carefully Spanish girls are brought up. Chaperones until they're 40 and all that. <laughs> how old is this girl? I'd say her age was uncertain. Has she got a chaperone? No. Okay. <laughs> how did you happen to meet her? Well, it started with Tangleless. Oh, so that's where you've been all these evenings. Now, don't misunderstand, Gildy. It was nothing but business at the start. Yeah. She's in the tango business? Well, she's open to dancing school. Oh. I thought maybe the best way to break the ice might be to write her a letter. A love letter. Well, that's not very original. I thought of sending some flowers with a letter. Well, that might take the curse off it. If you don't mind, Gildy. I, <laughs> I've made a draft of such a letter, and I... Could I read it to you? Oh, by all means. I think it's kind of cute. See how you like it. <clears throat> to whom it may concern. <laughs> By these presents be it known that whereas the undersigned has long admired the party of the first part, Miss Dolores Del Rey, and whereas... No, no, Judge. No good? No good. Well, I intended it in a humorous vein, Gildy. Well, it doesn't come through, Judge. And anyway, it's the wrong approach. Yes, huh? Definitely. This woman is Spanish. You have to remember that. What do you know about Spanish? I merely studied it for a whole year, that's all, in high school. <laughs> hablo usted espanol? Si, sí, señor, yo hablo espanol. ¿Dónde está mi sombrero? Spanish. <laughs> Gildy! Gildy, would you help me with this letter, would you? Tomorrow, Judge. we got to get down to the club now. Well, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to make the Jolly Boys tonight, Gildy. What do you mean? You're on the way. No, no. You see, I... Uh... I have other plans for this evening. Oh, slush. Sorry I can't invite you to come with me. Judge, you couldn't drag me there with a subpoena. No good. Though Gildersleeve gets here. Can't play with only three. Well, where is Mr. Gildersleeve, anyway? Well, he'll be here. Hooker's the man that's really run out on the jolly boys. You know what? I think Hooker's got a dame on his mind. At his age? You're dreaming, Floyd. It's Hooker that's dreaming. Let me tell you. He came in a barber shop four days ago and bought a haircut, shave, massage, and oil shampoo. That's $2.40. And then he remarked it was too bad I didn't have a manicure girl. Ooh. Hmm, he says. Listen, Peavy, Judge Hooker never spent more than 60 cents in a barber shop in his life. 240 at his age is love. Well, 
You may be right at that. I know I'm right. There's just one thing I wonder about. What's that? Where would the judge find an object for his affection? Hmm, there's something in there. These days? Why, the judge could do all right just picking up Gildersleeve's gift card. When I was a young man, Uh-oh. before my beard was gray. Are there any jolly boys up there? Gildersleeve, hurry up. All the kids and sailor men, I gave my heart <laughs> away. Now, Commissioner, none of those broken down bad tone solos. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, jolly boys. Chief, Chief. Hi, Commissioner. Hi, Hi. Hi. Gildersleeve. What's cooking, if any? If not, why not? We were just talking about our absent brother, Judge Hooker. I got a theory he's stuck on a dame. <laughs> What makes you think that, Floyd? Spent $2.40 in the shop one day last week. Tipped me 10 cents, too. I forgot that. <laughs> Not only that, Mr. Gildersleeve, he was in my store only yesterday. And I noticed he was behaving in rather cute manner. Oh, how do you mean, Peavy? Well, he seemed nervous. He ordered a lemon frosté, then just sat there and toyed with it. Poked it with his straw and so on. Never did drink it. Yeah. Well, what's peculiar about that? Well, the judge likes to get his money worth. <laughs> Anyhow, he just sat there looking out the window, wouldn't talk, wouldn't drink his phosphate. Forget the phosphate. It was probably no good. There was nothing the matter with the phosphate. I tasted it later. <laughs> Never mind, Peavy. Get to the point. Oh. Well, he sat there mooning, and all of a sudden the town clock struck five, and he jumped up and dashed into the phone booth. Well... When a man his age makes calls from a booth, much of business. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still say all you guys are just making a fairy story. Judge is 60, and everybody knows it. Sure, everybody knows it. But does the judge know it? What do you think, Commissioner? Gentlemen, I don't think. I know. I'm in a position to inform you that Cupid's dark has struck our friend, Judge Hooker, right over his left hand, vest pocket. <laughs> yeah. Don't laugh, boys. Remember, this girl may be somebody's grandmother. Yes. <laughs> how, uh, how do you know this for sure, Commissioner? Oh, the judge told me. Uh, did he mention the name of the fair one? Well, the lady is named Dolores Del Rey. He claims she's a Spanish beauty. Dolores Del Rey? Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. That's the woman that's opening up the new dancing academy there on State Street, next to Beckman's drugstore. Well, she was in the station last week to get her license. Oh? Uh, did you see her? Did I? Oh, you're darn certain I did. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> my desk sergeant saw her, too. I thought he was going to jump right out of his uniform. No kidding. Oh, she's a real knockout. Yeah. Well, well, apparently the judge has got something. <laughs> you know, fellas, I promised to help him write a love letter. But the judge has always been such a good friend of mine. Maybe I ought to go a little further for him. <laughs> what do you mean, Mr. Gildersleeve? I'm willing to call on the lady in person. That's all, brother. <laughs> I resent your insinuation, Floyd. Do you think a member of the Jolly Boys Club would steal the girl of another member? Not if he was looking. Yep. <laughs> Floyd, we're all gentlemen here. Uh, oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. Yeah, well, <laughs> see that you remember. Shall we play, gentlemen? Yeah, come on, let's get down to business. There is a cavern in the town, in the town. Oh, no, open there, my true love. Come on, let's wait for the into the town and drink this wine.
get back to the great Gildersleeve. He'd promised, you remember, to compose for his old friend Judge Hooker a love letter calculated to arouse, yet not alarm, a Spanish lady of tender breeding. After sleeping on the idea, however, he's come up with a better one. So let's join him in his study where he's discussing it with the judge. I'll tell you why I didn't judge. I might write you the best love letter in the world. But after all, what's a letter? A cold thing at best. What you need is a more personal touch. But Gildy is... My own best work has not been done by mail, Judge, believe me. But I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know what to say. When I'm alone, I can think of all kinds of beautiful thoughts. But I'm when I'm with her, I'm tongue-tied. Well, then let me handle it for you. How? Well, arrange to have me meet her. No, oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Horace, you trust me, don't you? I don't know. Well... Of course, if you don't trust me, I can't do anything for you. Now, don't get sore. This was your idea, you know. Heaven knows I have no interest in the woman. Any woman, for that matter. I... I was saying to Floyd only last night. Funny about women. I can take them or let them alone. Well? Gildy, I don't want you to think I don't trust you, but if Look, you... Horace. You remember when you were in school? You remember the courtship of Miles Standish? He wanted to propose to a girl, but he didn't know how. So we got John Alden to do it for him? This is like that. Hmm. How did Miles Standish come out on that? <laughs> it, all right, we'll forget Miles Standish. What is it? Nothing but a poem by Longfellow. What does Longfellow know? He probably ran if he even saw a girl. Did you ever read Cyrano? I think so. Now, there's a poem by a Frenchman, Judge. You can't fool those Frenchmen. Longfellow. You remember Cyrano? He was so ugly, no woman would look at him. So he wrote love letters for his friend who was young and handsome and attractive. Now, that's more like it. If you promise to handle it like that, not double-cross me. Judge, did Damon double-cross Pythias? No, but I'll bet Pythias kept an eye on him. <laughs> I give up. I was willing to help you out, but this is too much. No, I'm sorry, Gildy. I'm sorry, old man. I'm sorry. Sorry. I won't say another word. Now, how can we arrange it? Well... I think the thing to do is to arrange to have me meet her. You know, just casually, and give me a little time alone with her so that I can... Why alone? Judge! Oh, I'm sorry, but I I don't see why I can't come along. Because! How can I tell her what a great fellow you are? How brilliant, how attractive, with you sitting right there belying my every word? <laughs> well, I don't care for the way you put it, but perhaps you have a point. All right, when are you going to see her again? Tonight. Good. Call her up and tell her you're going to bring a friend. And you arranged to arrive a little late, see? Give me time to break the ice. How much time do you need? Half an hour. I don't stall around. <laughs> the date's for 8 o'clock. I'll plan to arrive at 8.30. Uh, wait a minute. One more thing. What's her address? Oh, I hope I don't regret this. It's 178 Homedale Avenue, apartment 2B. Uh, what'd you say her name is? Uh, Dolores? Dolores Del Rey. Oh, shall I call her Senorita, or does she understand English? I'd prefer that you call her Miss Del Rey. That's what I call her. No wonder you're not getting any place with her. <laughs> well, leave it to me, Judge. Leave it to me. And I'll see you tonight. I shall be there at 8.30. Bruin, watch time. <laughs> Dark up here. <laughs> Looks like a nice place, though. Apartment 2B. Oh, here. La -da. Hmm, very pretty. La -da -dee -dee. La -dee -da -dee -da. Oh. Dee. Oh. <laughs> uh, good evening. Senorita Del Rey, I presume? Yes, I am Miss Del Rey. Uh, my name's Gildersleeve. Judge Hooker said he was going to phone. Ah, Mr. Gildersleeve, yes. Come in. Uh, the, uh... Judge was unavoidably detained. He'll be a little late. Oh? Oh, that is too bad. Still, maybe we can spend a little time getting acquainted, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you bet. Oh, excuse me. May I have your call? Oh, excuse me. Thank you. You're walking stick? Uh, you're welcome. I mean, thank you. <laughs> this is a very handsome stick. Now, a nice chair for you? Chair? Oh, anything at all. <laughs> Uh, you mind if I smoke a cigar, senorita? Oh, but I love cigars. Sometimes I think I would like to smoke cigars myself, only it might look funny. You think so? <laughs> you look cute smoking a cigar. <laughs> Have one. They're two for a quarter. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Thank you very much. 
<laughs> I was only joking. Joking? <laughs> well, so was I. I'll smoke later. So you are the judge's great friend, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, that's me. I like you. Uh, the feeling is mutual, senorita. Uh, the judge thinks quite a lot of you, you know. He does? What does he say about me? He said you were beautiful. Mm. <laughs> he told me you had beautiful black hair and eyes and, uh, uh... I hope you are not disappointed. Oh, brother. <laughs> He's a fine fellow, isn't he? Oh, he's very sweet. Huh? I think he is very sweet. Well, he probably shows you his sweet side. <laughs> he's a very good lawyer. Now tell me something about yourself for a change. Are you a lawyer? Oh, no, I'm a water commissioner. Uh, in the water business? I work for the city. Uh, I see that everybody gets water. In the houses, factories, and so on. Oh, you are a big man. Well, I guess it's a pretty important job. Oh, you are too modest. Where would the people be if you did not send them water? I don't know. I never thought of that. <laughs> Always now, when I turn on the faucet, I will think of Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice. Uh, I'd like to see you again sometime, Miss Del Rey. Uh, you know, to talk about the judge. Oh, I would like very much to see you. Would we have to talk about the judge exclusively? Well, not all the time. <laughs> we could go to the movies. There's, there's quite a few things we could do. Don't you dance, senor? You look like a good dancer. You rumba a little? Rumba? Uh, I'm not much on the fancy stuff. Oh, you would be a fine rumba dancer. You have just the figure for it. Uh. <laughs> you know, I think you have some Spanish in you. Uh, Spanish? What makes you think that? Your complexion, your eyes. Maybe your temperament a little, too. Well, what do you know about my temperament? I can guess. You are a man with fire. <laughs> I'll bet you're no frigid air yourself. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, senor, I am serious. You have Latin ancestors, perhaps? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Way back there, some Spanish dawn or something. Don't they sell me sombrero? Your hat? What's your hurry, senor? Oh, no, no, no. I was just, uh, just trying out my Spanish. Oh, oh, I'll be very good. It's a shame you don't dance, senor. You have no feeling for rhythm. Oh, sure I have. I even sing a little. Oh, then you could dance, too. Let me hear you sing. Well, I'm no professional. Come on, I play for you. Well, Miss Del Rey, whatever you say. Oh, it's for it, too. Que hombre. Huh? That means what a man. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. <laughs> you know... You are not exactly the man the judge described to me. What do you mean? I had expected you to be older. As old as the judge? Oh, oh maybe not quite. But I thought you would be fatter. Fatter? Why that? Oh, but you are quite slender. I keep myself in pretty good shape. Feel my muscles. Here, feel that. <gasps> oh, I would be afraid of you. Oh, I wouldn't hurt you. <laughs> Will you sing now? If you really want me to sing, how about... Sesame Mucho. Oh, that is a beautiful song. Oh. Come, I'll play for you. Is this your key? My key? Me, 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 me. I guess so. <laughs> Sesame, Sesame Mucho. Each time I swing to your ships, I hear music divine. Darling, and say that you'll always be mine. Oh, you have a thrilling voice, Senor. Yeah, thank you. Bésame, bésame You know what that means, Senor? Bésame mucho. Yeah. <laughs> Do I? By George, if it weren't for the judge. Oh. The judge. Couldn't you just for one little moment? Oh, the door. Booker. <laughs> Don't get up. Let me go. It might be somebody looking for the wrong apartment. Very well, if you insist. Well, Gildy. Come back in an hour, Judge. This is going to take longer than I thought. <laughs>
This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.